Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the uh, podcast where we talk about the big pro wrestling of the week. Little pro wrestling's for the indie mayhem. That's not a demeaning term, I'd like to think. Uh, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, live from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And we're going worldwide tonight, and you'll find out why in just a moment. Joining me, my usual compatriot, he's DJ Lunchbox from the Nation of Box. Uh, at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitter. How you doing tonight, sir? I am fantastic. Hello, you beautiful little blood sm- blood-soaked monstrosities. I'm so happy that you're joining us this week. Uh, and I'm happy that you're here too, Sork. Me too. Me too. Also joining us from Poughkeepsie, New York, the uh, nation of madness. It's Mad Mike. How you doing, Sorgelstein? It, it's it's a good week to be a wrestling fan. I think. Excellent, excellent. Also joining us, the uh, the maker of the Mayhem Media is going to be joining us full show here this week. It's Matt Carlin's, our friend in the mainstream media and mainstream Matt Awesome to be here, Sorg. Look here. Let's take a quick peek. Look, the big board's ready. It's ready. They have Mania round three. Can't wait to play. Let's do it, baby. It's been a lot of fun so far and getting a lot of uh, reaction online as well. And also joining us, uh, we talked to this guy way back in 2011. I tweeted out the video from today. I know, Matt, you said you got caught up in the old episode. Uh, but uh, he's the CEO of Serious Parody, the makers of Wrestling Manager on the iOS, on the iPhones. Uh, and coming up, Five Star Wrestling uh, on the PlayStation 3. Can't wait to hear a little bit about that. Is Dan Hinkles join us from the United Kingdom, somewhere over there. Scotland, wasn't it, right? Yeah, we're in, I'm in Dundee here uh, in Scotland. So good to see everybody. Hope you're all well. Awesome, awesome. We'll be talking to him about what's going on there uh, in a little bit and get his opinions about wrestling uh, in general. Hey, hey, if you guys don't subscribe to the uh, Patreon and get gold on there, we had a great kind of QA with them real quick. We had some questions about British fans and wrestling um, that I thought was really, really fun here for, for the live audience. So go check that out if you donate a dollar over at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just like our good friends, uh, our friends from the wrestling and Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! supporting us they are our bosses and they actually got a state of the mayhem address uh our monthly address that i do here and they got some inside information about some stuff coming up uh so go check that out um uh, you know stuff stuff announced maybe some stuff that's not finalized you don't know where the mayhem's going but those guys do and they help out supporting the show and that's their reward for that that plus this other stuff like gold and we're trying to work on some other stuff uh to bring a little more value to that as well uh big thanks to basic sickness basic sickness.com for our intro please check out this and other shows and subscribe to us on itunes rate us on itunes most of all please uh and and, and any and subscribe to us wherever you want all the links over at wrestling mayhem show.com uh also please subscribe to our youtube a new thing we started up today mayhem minute i'm trying to do a daily kind of quick news commentary thing at least four days a week here uh so you can get a little bit of mayhem, a little piece of mayhem daily-ish. Uh, so uh, we're going to see how that goes, a little bit of an experiment here. You can also drop us a line uh, to the email address. Good, Good time! Oh, you guys are slow yes. tonight! Slow tonight! A little bit of lag out there on the internet. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline at 412-206-WMS0. Please look up at Mayhem Show on Twitter and look up the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google+. Plus. You can join us here live every Tuesday at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Like these good folks are, like Alex Cars. Riz is in there hanging out as well. You can check out the shirt B Riz that Alex put up there. And everybody else, Wheels is in there as well. Uh, so uh, uh, go check all them out. So let's get into it, guys. First of all, uh, the big thing we saw, uh, finally we got a Raw, guys. We got a Raw last night. We had a big announcement. And the big announcement is your Royal Rumble win doesn't matter, Roman Reigns. <laughs> maybe. Um, uh, might may- not matter. Maybe. Uh, Could possibly not matter. Maybe. He should have at least said it like The Rock. <laughs> Why, how's that? What did you do at the Royal, at the Royal Rumble, Roman Reigns? Well, like, it doesn't matter what you did at the Royal Rumble. 
<laughs> at least, at least do that. Well, first of all, this is my first thing. And, and, and Matt, you wrote a great article. We'll get to here in a moment on your blog. But, but this is potentially if this goes the way we think it's going to go. I know it's kind of like we need something to do that month in between. But how many times have we switched up things? We've had a new champion. Even though like a guy goes to the main event, we've had an elimination chamber, gives a whole different person to, 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 to face at WrestleMania in the meantime and the champion. Um, I mean, does the Rumble matter as much as it used to in setting up that WrestleMania? What do you guys think? It matters if you're talking about the fans going full throat and telling WWE what they would rather have mm -hmm. other than the thing that they're being given. If that's, I guess the rumble does matter because it's like the point of no return. I know we <laughs> talked about that a little bit last week for all the fans. Mm -hmm. We're like, Oh, Oh wait, WrestleMania is almost here. I better get my booze in on reigns now before they push them all the way to the main event. Oh wait, too late. Oh, screw this. And then they have to come back around and try to make it up to us again. I'm it's a vicious cycle sword. I'm scared of this trend. I'm I, I, what did we do in Pittsburgh? What did we start here? I, I'm worried. But it's not like it's entirely unprecedented. No, no, certainly not. Because, I mean, the first Rumble that Austin won, he didn't go to the main event. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon won a Rumble. Right. He didn't go to the main event. Right. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I heard this on another show. I don't remember which one. Um, I think that the Rumble is kind of like, I think WWE is booking to make the internet reaction the new kayfabe. Like, how, how do you mean that? They're playing off our reaction because we all read the internet. We read that, hey, look, they're going to push Roman Reigns to the moon. Hey, look, Daniel Bryan's going to face Sheamus again. But they're playing into that. They're like, okay, if that's what they believe the narrative is, let's use that as our narrative. Okay. Okay. So they, they are I listening. Mean, they, they, are... They, even, they even so much as said Cena versus Rusev was supposed to be at WrestleMania, but now it's going to be at Fastlane. Yeah. They said that on Raw. Like, it's what? Start Why was it going to be Cena and Rusev at WrestleMania? That makes no sense at all. Like, right. unless you read the internet. Right, exactly. Uh, Dan, what do you think about this 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 shift lately? Well, I mean, it, it it looks like the Royal Rumble is a bit of a curse, right? So, I mean, if you think about it, uh, Edge won and then had to retire. Albert Alberta de Rio won that huge Royal Rumble. Um, you know, the forty man thing. Um, you know, his career has gone. He's, he's not gone, but he's out the WWE, obviously. Sheamus won, and and you know, the fans turned on Sheamus. Um, Batista won, and they booed him out of the building, and, and now he's nowhere to be seen. And, and now Roman Reigns has won, and again, they've, they've booed him out of the building. And this is a guy that everybody, you know, like you skip back a couple of months, and everybody's like, Roman Reigns and the Shield are the best thing that's happened to WWE in a long time. We wanted Roman to do well, and, and he finally gets the push, but because we know that that's what they're trying to do, uh, you know, the, the fans have, have turned on him, which I think's a bit of a shame because that's that's the guy that we all wanted them to push. It's just that he started doing things like the uh, the repetitive drop kick kind of thing, and mm -hmm. that reminded everybody of Cena, I think. So yeah, I, I think the Rumble's more of a curse. Um, you know, Rey Mysterio won it recently. You know, in in his career, I guess. And yeah. <laughs> but even but even Ray had to defend his Royal Rumble title win against Randy Orton. Yeah. Like, Ray had to defend it. When The Rock won, it ended up being a fatal four-way at WrestleMania 2000. Mm -hmm. Like, there there are precedents for this, more than we think there are, if you really think about it. There's a lot of guys who've had to defend their Royal Rumble uh, title shots. Mm -hmm. That's a solid thing, right? I mean, that's, that's what they do there. It's, it's that whole, you know, something that they can use to, to move us through the next few months. I mean... They, you can't really count too many times that the, the Rumble's winners won and then they faced off with a champ and it's been the same two guys going head to head. Mm -hmm. You know, the championship might change hands or something like that. It's it's not a clear <laughs> path to the main event at WrestleMania. I anymore. mean, the only I thing, the like thing they, I wonder about. Oh, sorry, Duel. I, I feel like they have to. I mean, they have to do something to fill the time between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, and they have they have at least you know the one pay per view or two pay per views to get through. Mm -hmm. I'm not good with time. It's one pay per view. Sorry, um, <laughs> but uh, like they they have to they have to make it interesting. So 
that guy's big thing is main eventing Royal Rumble, and it, it just makes sense that the easiest thing is to put that in peril. But here's my question. The, Triple H said that the whole reason for the controversy was because after Reigns eliminated Big Show and Kane, they came back in and attacked them. If they had thrown Roman Reigns over the top rope, uh, Rusev would have won the Royal Rumble. Why wasn't Rusev included in any of those events that transpired last night? Hmm. It seems like he would have a more legitimate claim than anyone else. And, of course, Curtis Axel. Right. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I got a problem with this Curtis Axel thing. <laughs> <laughs> because here's the thing. This is not the first time this has happened to a wrestler right. in the Royal Rumble. Right. There have been plenty of guys who didn't make it to the ring. And because it was before the internet was so loud. Like, where's, where's uh, Zach Gowan? That Roy, he's still in the Royal Rumble. He never made it to the to the ring that one year that what? he was in. Zach Gowan? Really? I don't think he was ever in a ring. No, I don't think he was even like no, I, he was, no. Because he was coming in. I'm telling you, I remember this happening. He was coming down to the ring and someone jumped him and beat the crap out of him and never got in the ring. This is not an isolated incident. Hold on, I'm gonna tweet him but right now. I, 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 but how many how many people have actually addressed not being able to get to the like uh, they Maven have they have has a huge beef because Maven was never eliminated. They have though they yeah. have though uh the Maven Maven I agree with but they have uh, one of the early rumbles uh like Macho Man didn't come out and they didn't know who it was and they're like well you have until the next person to mm-hmm. hit the ring if you don't make it you're disqualified. Mm-hmm. So like I said the only reason it's being addressed on Raw is because the internet is so loud and everyone was like look at Curtis Axel let's make that a thing. Yeah. He was last night. He wasn't. He he was shipped back to NXT. He was brought out (laughs) and beat down on Raw. He caught the stink on Twitter. He got himself back on Raw. So good for him. Got himself back on TV. He got people to pay attention to him again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Too upset at Curtis Axel. I'm pretty sure if Twitter was a thing back in 2002 or whatever, Maven would have been like, "I eliminated the Undertaker." Where's my mania title shot, motherfuckers? <laughs> All right, I am well, the of a great night's... god. Okay, outside, outside of that, outside of the the, the technicalities of Royal Rumble, uh, let, let's touch a little bit on on, on Reigns and in you know this um, adjustment. Sword, sword. What? Yeah. Before we jump into that, Alex Gars just um, put in the chat room. So far, all searches come up with could Zach Gowan be eliminated from the Rumble? <laughs> <laughs> and that is something we've joked about for years. Right. Only. You throw over his prosthetic leg too. Exactly. Exactly. If well, you I got throw tweet- over him and his leg. Yes, he can. Do I have a tweet out to him to ask if he was ever in the rumble. Hopefully, he responds here before uh, <laughs> before before we go to press here. Um, but anyways, uh, speaking of going to press, uh, 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 Matt, you had uh, over at mainstreammatt.boxlaw.com, you had a pretty interesting article uh, discussing the Roman Reigns situation uh, surrounding the, the rumble and everything everything else. And if I can find the link there to show off. Uh, entitled uh, Roman yeah. Reigns, uh, that's the wrong one. Uh, Roman Reigns, uh, th- 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 you know, too much too soon or not soon enough. Uh, so, I, uh, what, what, what's the general premise of this to catch people up? Right. So, it, this is all based around people talking about uh, Roman so inexperienced. Roman only has X amount of one-on-one matches on pay-per-view. So, I did, I did a little bit of crude research while I was sitting through the 8 millionth Big Show versus Roman Reigns match last night on Raw. I yeah, just kind of went back in my memory banks to see if I could find, you know, similar case studies. And there are past guys with similar trajectories to Roman Reigns. Uh, Batista is probably the most comparable because of how long they, between their debut and when they actually won their title. But also, like, Brock Lesnar obviously had a spectacularly rapid rise up the card, like 160-some days. Sheamus had zero pay-per-view one-on-one matches before he beat John Cena for the WWE Championship. Uh, And then you had another one, which is actually the fastest uh, that I could find from WWE debut to title win, Yokozuna, who just popped up in October beats Virgil at the Survivor Series, wins the Royal Rumble, Virgil. goes to WrestleMania, and wins the title. Boom. Like 150-some-odd days. Like, So we're, we go back and we look at 
Roman Reigns from an experience standpoint, which is seems to be what people like to pin on him, that he doesn't have enough experience to carry the ball for WWE. Roman Reigns has like 20 pay-per-view matches under his belt. Granted, most of them tag matches with The Shield, Seth Rollins, etc. But when you compare him to guys like Batista, Brock Lesnar, Sheamus, Yokozuna, when those guys were given the major championship in the company, I mean, Reigns has got like double three times, 20 times the pay-per-view experience that those guys did at the time. Um, so I think it's kind of a fallacy when people talk about Reigns isn't experienced enough to be in the main event at WrestleMania and win the big belt. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that he is, and not only that, but WWE seems to do this all the time, and more often than not, it ends up being pretty successful in the end. I mean, I think we can all agree that all four of those other guys I mentioned worked out okay with their title runs. Mm -hmm. The only thing about I think with the problem with Roman, because I mean last year, you guys were chanting for Roman Reigns when it was him and Batista. Yep. The the problem is that after the Shield broke up, Roman Reigns has had enough time to expose every single solitary one of his flaws. Every single I, one of them. And I think that goes back to the main point and the reason why the title of the article is what it is. Too much too soon. Not really. Actually, not soon enough. They should have had Reigns win the Rumble in 2014. When people were still not quite ready for him, that would have made it hotter. And you know what? He had enough experience at that point to do it anyways. So Plus you could have, you could have had a thing, you almost you almost let – let the fuse burn too long. I, I can't think of a right analogy, but you almost let him, you almost overexposed him to a point. You could have also had a really cool shield versus authority thing going into last year's WrestleMania because Randy Orton was the champion at the time. Like, and we got the shield versus evolution thing after WrestleMania, but shield versus shield versus what essentially was evolution going into Mania. That could have been really interesting too. Definitely. I just want to ask you guys a question. I mean, was any of you surprised by the booze at the Royal Rumble, or did you fully expect that to happen? After Daniel Bryan got eliminated, yeah. Uh, it was, it yeah. was pretty downhill from there. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you just felt the air being sucked out of that arena. Mm -hmm. okay. you, you just felt it. Like, it was just... Like, I see what they were doing by trying to eliminate Bryan early, so people would have time to recover enough to maybe get behind Reigns. But, no. Like, I think it almost would have been better if Brian was... essentially had the Rusev spot. Like, if the Authority came in, beat the shit out of Brian, and Big Show knocked him out and he, like, fell through the ropes or something, and then you have Brian come in after that, have a face-off of Reigns, and then Reigns spears him and eliminates him. I think that actually would have been better because then people would be like, Okay, Brian got a lot of time in there. He had a shot. They're going another way. Don't you think it's funny, though, that like WWE basically, through their own ignorance, whatever, walked straight into the buzzsaw at the Royal Rumble <laughs> when everyone else could see that this was coming. They knew that the fans were going to cheer for Brian. And now what does WWE do? They turn right back around. They make a match for fast lane between Brian and Reigns. They walk right back into the buzzsaw. Uh, they're clearly looking for this to happen. I, at this I, point. I think there's some. Like they're encouraging it. I, I think there's some ideas as to why that's happening. I think we'll get to those here in our next discussion. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll let us know what you think on Twitter. What do you think about where Roman Reigns is? Uh, and definitely read that article over at uh, 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 Matt Carlin's uh, blog over there. Um, oh, hey, uh, and, and also added to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, our links, uh, there's an RSS feed down there. We've had WrestleZone for a while because they've been very supportive of, of us and working with uh, 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 Chair Shot Reality a couple summers ago here. Um but there's also one there for the uh, Mainstream Matt's blog, uh, so you can check out uh, uh, that directly from WrestlingMayhemShow.com as well, including the Mayhem Manias that we've been doing here at the end of the show the last few weeks. So, uh, in the meantime, hey, support some good wrestling out there and support the show, please. Um, as always, please please uh, uh, give a uh, shout out and, and jump over to uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Um, really great site, really supportive, uh, you know, giving people a, a place to support their wares. 
uh, you know, us in podcasting world for wrestling, uh, promotions, everything like that. A lot of, a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of the guys like friend of the show, Gregory Iron, CM Punk approved Gregory Iron that we've had on the show in the past. Uh, he's got some fun stuff. Uh, I, I can tell you, I've seen this guy walk into a, a chair shot reality shoot with an LJN Hulk Hogan figure. Um, and, uh, it, like he is a, a fan of the, uh, good old days of wrestling. And you can tell that if you check out his shirts, <laughs> he has a shirt on here. I just noticed, uh, called Crippum in the style of Rip'em from No Holds Bart. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That's awesome. Um, so he's got a lot of fun stuff on there. A lot of great designs. Um, I think he does a lot. I'm pretty sure he's a bit of an artist. Like I think some of these might be his own designs. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, and also, they, they have, they're they have always adding uh, a lot of bigger names, too. There's my girl Lita, Amy Dumas, uh, Hall of Famer. She's got a few shirts on there. The Road Warriors are represented with some awesome old-school-looking uh, stuff. Uh, so if you want to get those and support, of course, friends of the show and others in indie wrestling and podcasting and promotions and all kinds of stuff, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Start there. Throw one of our great designs from Alex Cars in your cart and uh, shop away and support them and support the show. So the other thing that happened um, over the uh, <laughs> after Raw, um, and I thought it was an interesting timing for this. I, I know it probably wasn't planned in advance of everything that happened. Maybe they didn't expect the Royal Rumble to happen the way it was. But we got another free month of it WWE. Must- I'm sorry. Oh, I got feedback. Sorry. Uh, I, we, you know, we get we're getting another free month of WWE Network, and we get another Stone Cold podcast this time with the COO of WWE. Triple H, and, and my title here says it's all. This is my opinion of it. I talked about it a little bit on New uh, Mayhem Minute over on YouTube. Um, and Triple H is just a dude on a podcast. Um, because a lot of what I thought, and, and, and I know we have some emails that disagree with me. Um, I don't know if it was a podcast. I don't know if it was some, an interview I read. But Triple H is a fan, right? Uh, of wrestling and that's why he's so in depth and everything and, and I thought it was really cool to kind of hear him like be you know how he got into the production and creative side of things when he got to that point in WWE and realized how much more there was to it um, as a guy that shoots wrestling I realized how many people don't know there's cameras looking at them you know I, I think that's really important uh, you know I like no hard cams over here promoter um, that hired me to put the camera over here that is talking to the crowd back there um you know you know that kind of stuff i i, I really appreciated his talk uh, uh monday night um i want to get generally what were you what did you guys get from that what did everybody uh what first did everybody get a chance to watch it that, that's here i didn't check beforehand yes like mm-hmm. everybody did for the most part okay uh, yep. lb what did you think uh, what was your takeaways from from that interview this time I, I agree that he was a dude on a podcast and he was very much trying to come off as like, you know, friend and regular guy on podcast saying whatever. What he was trying to do was he was trying to come off casual and give insider info, but he was very being very careful um, and trying to toe the company line to a certain degree, but I he feel has. Like. To, but he has to. He's a so COO. That's kind of his exactly. job to toe the the company line a bit, you know. But I thought, exactly. I so thought, he was he was trying to be, you know, a uh, guy, friend to the listener, right. regular guy, and all that stuff. But he was also representing a multi million dollar company. So I feel like a lot of that came through. Mm-hmm. And while he was being careful and choosing his words carefully, he was also, you know not choosing his words carefully because he was so worried about towing the line. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because he said the thing about China and not didn't consider how that is the, uh, the wrong approach <laughs> because right. of all the other things that we'll find out later. Right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on that here too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mike, what did you think about the, the, the show? I, unfortunately, I thought it was more scripted than the Vince one. Really? Yeah. I, I thought... To me, it came off. Triple H and Austin seem like guys who talk more to each other than, say, Austin and Vince do. And it seems like that it was discu- like a lot of it was discussed beforehand because right. I because Vince made a lot of really off the wall comments, and maybe that's just Vince. But Triple H played it very, very close to the chest, almost like he knew what questions were going to be asked and everything. I mean, again, Triple H is a smart guy. He probably could have figured out some of the questions that Austin was going to ask him. 
But I don't know. I mean, I don't think it was as good. I think, I think I'd be more interested to see Austin interview, like a Roman Reigns. I think that would be supremely interesting. And as much as we don't like Roman talking that much, I think Austin would be able to get something out of him that right. maybe we haven't seen. And I think that would actually help more than any anything that Triple H can say, more than anything that Triple H can pass the buck on to Vince McMahon, mm-hmm. more than Daniel Bryan raising his hand, more than anything. I think Roman Reigns explaining his side of the story to Steve Austin would be – the most beneficial thing you could do. It's like, um, I've had this discussion with some guys in local wrestling promotions, like when we've had some people on the indie show, and they're younger guys, right, trying to kind of figure out what they are and what their voice is. And that discussion of of what, you know, where do they find the character? How do they come off on the interview? Are they comfortable, you know, in their own skin, basically? Uh, so it sounds like that's what you're looking for with Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. So. I, I want to know he can talk like a person and not just have, like, the three to five sentence window that I've been talking about that they've done this mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Dan, I see you. I see you stroking your chin there. Yeah, I know you got some thoughts. <laughs> I am. Um, I, I love the podcast. I, I like Triple H on there. I, I find it interesting uh, that you might want the room and rins on there. Um, I think I think that would probably come off a little awkward because obviously the Roman Reigns we see is a character and not a person. And, mm-hmm. And do an hour's worth of in character would be would be trying for for any you know really good actor and I know, I know we're not meant to view them as actors but it's kind of what they're doing right right um, but I, I thought Triple H was good I I liked seeing him uh, you know in that kind of mannerism in fact that that was that was I'm a big Triple H fan anyway but that was one of my favorite um, my favorite moments from him because it was more like he was you know. That interaction with Austin backstage, it felt like he was more loose. It felt like he was actually talking to a guy. I was, I was half expecting the Michael Cole kind of, you know, their weekly thing, especially at the end of Raw when he said, "I'll, I'll address all this on, on the podcast." I thought the whole podcast was going to be done in kayfabe, and and straight away they got rid of that. So. Yeah, I, w- I was impressed by it. I'd love to see. I could sit and watch that for, for hours on end if they carried on going. They're, they're having a fun dance, aren't they, between kayfabe and not kayfabe? I, I mean, they talked about kayfabe on, on this on this interview. You know, um, it, it's it's you know, and especially as we go back and forth with stuff on the network. You know, it, it, like I feel like at a certain point we need like a disclaimer. It's like, hey guys, this is kayfabe. Hey, this is a really like I feel like a lot of the casual fan is really confused by an interview like we had Monday night. I, I think everybody's. A, 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 he kind of said the same thing about backstage wrestlers, right? He was saying that um, you know guys in the industry don't know if they're being worked even when they're off camera. You know, like they don't trust each other all the time because they think somebody's got another angle and all that kind of thing. And and I just think that the WWE have got used to uh, what our response will be, and, and now they've started working the internet. Like I, I'm. I don't know how how this is, but I'm pretty sure most of what they did with Daniel Bryan last year was was already thought up and planned. Um, I always maybe give them too much credit for this kind of stuff, but (laughs) it's like the Roman Reigns thing from the Rumble. There's no way, absolutely no way, they did not know he was going to get booed to death at the end of the Rumble. I mean, that's why they booked The Rock, right? To try and bring The Rock out and and give him the rub there. But uh, there's... They knew what that fan base was going to do. They, they knew that. Just like they know that if they put him in a match at WrestleMania with anybody but, say, John Cena, he's going to get booed. If, if, it was, if it was Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, he would be booed to death. So I don't think that Royal Rumble reaction was a surprise at all. I think they thought, right, they're going to boo here, and therefore we're going to do that, and then that's part of the storyline, maybe to build up Brian. You know, why else would they eliminate Brian so early in the match? Rather than rather than at the end, they know the booze are coming anyway. Right. Um, I I just think that they're smarter than that, and I think they're already playing us. And and that's kayfabe switched from being what they do in the ring to what they do out the ring because they know that it's only us that care about that. The guys right. that care about kayf, you know, like that, that care about what actually happens in the match, they can watch Raw and enjoy that, and they can work us on the internet. I, I think it's I think they've got it nailed. Well, maybe I just give them too much credit. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, to your point, 
I, I hadn't even thought about that until you just mentioned it. They might have been purposely trying to separate Bryans and Reigns so that they could have this match at Fastlane. Mm. Like, that actually makes boatloads of sense. Because if, you, if you're going to have, like, Daniel Bryan insert himself into a feud because he never got his title shot, that makes more sense to have him not interact with Roman at all. Right. Nothing seems chance. I mean, as much as you, it feels like, oh, they just they made that decision from the reaction, there's a plan. There's a plan in place longer than you expected. I think you were, they alluded to that a little bit with Triple H, and if you saw the recent, was it Grantland that did, or SB Nation that did the, um, uh, the look back at the writing process? kind of behind the scenes a few weeks ago. Um, it, it's it's a lot broader than, than you think. Uh, Matt, what are your thoughts it, it, on the interview before it, we get to the fan mail here? Uh, I, I think Daniel's on, on the right track. It's the, the most interesting thing about that whole podcast was when he and Austin got into that kayfabe discussion. And, and you just it makes you wonder like about how many layers of reality we're really seeing. Like, where where is... The, the reality that there's it seems like Triple H understands better than most mm-hmm. um, how to really manipulate the internet. It almost feels like he figured it out faster than most people did. So now you, you you're you're sitting back and watching this podcast and like, okay, is this real? Because I, I know Total Divas isn't real, and I know what I see half the stuff I see on Twitter isn't real. And I know what I see in the arena isn't real. So how do I know this podcast is real? How do I know the podcast isn't part of the work too? And that's when the real mind screw job starts to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, I think that's, uh, that, that's a, that's an admirable goal for triple H to have as someone who's in a creative position with WWE is to, is to make the storyline such that, you can't find the reality in it and you, you're so disoriented by where you're being manipulated and, and where it's genuine that you just kind of, it just kind of envelops you and, and you just go along for the ride, which is what we want in the end anyways, is just make us believe. And, you know, this is a perfect way to trick do it. Trick me. Trick me. I'm looking for you to trick me. I'm looking. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I want you to be the magician that, that I don't see pull the egg out of his pocket. Like on I, recently, <laughs> I feel like I feel like he said a little bit like that on the on the podcast. He said, you know, if the writing is good, you're not worried about, you know, the the backstage stuff. Right. And I feel like maybe that's not what he meant when he said that, but it's, uh, it's true. If the writing's really good, you can't tell what the backstage stuff is. Exactly, exactly. So let's. Uh, I want to get some other opinions I, I here. I think it, I think it's also sorry, sorry. Just okay. Little, um, I think it was kind of fun that Triple H said that. They had a plan last year, and certain things did change it. So mm-hmm. I think right now, by admitting that, by admitting basically that CM Punk leaving changed their plans, I think they're trying to make wrestling fans think that we're doing it again when really this was the whole plan from the beginning. Right. Yeah, I, I think you've just got to look as well. I mean, we all saw um, Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker's interaction at the UFC event. Right, where Undertaker approached him, and it's memorable because you don't really see Undertaker outside of the ring ever. And he, you know, he says, "Do you want to do it?" And we just so happen to capture that on camera somewhere, right? Um, and then uh, three years later, he ends the streak. So I mean, that gives you the idea of how long they are, you know, they they are planning ahead. Just like we knew when they signed The Rock that they'd sign him to a multi-year deal and. You know, it was for very specific events, and Brock Lesnar was for very specific events. So that gives you an idea of how far out in advance they work. And I reckon they changed some things along the way uh, for, for the reaction. But you just think about this for a second. The crowd at WrestleMania last year was as hot as they could be for Daniel Bryan, right? And he's winning the main event. And we was all like, oh, we've, we've done that ourselves. We've got Bryan to that point. On the podcast last night, he's saying, "Oh yeah, they, you know, they kept Brian down on purpose at various points, and they kept killing him off at various points." So they they pushed us. What what reaction would they have wanted for Brian at WrestleMania? They would have wanted the most, you know, ferocious amount of fans behind him, and that's exactly what they got. So I don't think that was a reaction. I think they knew exactly what they was doing um, with, with him there, and and I think they're doing exactly the same this year. 
with you know, Roman Reigns and how they want him to be handled. They know they're going to have to turn him heel at some point or something along them lines. Um, it's exciting. I, I like the I like the way that they can mess with you like this. I think, it, I think that's good. I want to touch a little bit on here. We have a lot of opinion about things that were said during that interview. Uh, one email from Eamon, my compatriot over on the Indie Mayhem show, of course, announcer over at NWA Inspire Pro. Uh, he's saying about, uh, you know, China is a big subject and is being brought up in the chat room by Riz. I want to get to that, too. Uh, last night on live Stone Cold podcast, Triple H said that a lot that I agree with and got behind, except for one thing. I think he got, he got caught here with a, a pre-discussion. I think this was a curveball, uh, personally. Um, uh, he loosely stated sorry I lost my place he loosely stated that the reason China will not be inducted in Hall of Fame is because of fear that children could google a new Hall of Fame inductee China and see a recent venture in porn I want to I want to kind of sidebar this I think he's saying one of the reasons is is this and I think we're kind of hanging on that a little bit but still uh, valid points here Uh, for a Hall of Fame that has inducted a convicted rapist Mike Tyson and alleged murderer Jimmy Snuka and a man that's been charged with domestic abuse Steve Austin and well a porn star Sonny do you find his statement by Hunter a bit hypocritical Um, and uh, before we respond to that uh, from Riz he also added on but if you look at there's, there's Tammy and who you know what you find like prices to see her naked. Type in Carlos Colon on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll find stories about how he and other wrestlers are responsible for the death of Bruiser Brody. Two things: uh, Snuka and Sonny. I don't think we're doing anything. We're not reconvicted. Uh, uh, Snuka recently went back and they reopened the case that I think was closed for a long time. So that's after he was inducted. Sonny, was she doing all that much lewd before she was put on? And uh, definitely not anything as mainstream as China has. So oh, I think... But, Go but ahead. Sorg, the thing about China doing porn... Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys remember the first time you saw China naked? I WWF Playboy oh, Diva! Oh, that's a good point. And, and I, think, I think more so, because he kind of was, was... He didn't say porn, right? Like he didn't I don't say say that. If you the problem is, if you look up China, you're going to see about her addiction problems. You're going to see those horrible performances on those reality shows she's been in. I I think the other thing is Jake wasn't getting in while he was still addicted to drugs. Scott Hall wasn't getting in while he was still an alcoholic. Now that they've gone through you after they went through that process and got better and came around, that's when they got in the Hall of Fame. Basically, China's got to get herself clean. She's so gotta, basically, China needs to do DDP yoga. Th- th- there you go. She, she's got to join the halfway house of Scott <laughs> Actually, Hall and Jake Roberts. First of all, I, lo- idea. I love the idea of dr- Jake Roberts, Scott Hall, and DDP just living in a house together is the, just the most entertaining thing. I can't wait for that documentary to come out uh, because there's a cameraman that's been following them for the last few years of this. And they've, put in, they've been putting clips, I know, on DDP's website. Um, but no, yeah, I, I think that's it. It's not, it's not, you know, what is your past? It is what is your past right now? You know, um, and I think he spoke a lot to that about talking to Bruno, about talking to Warrior and getting past that. Um, I think even though he's kind of a wrestling minded person, you know, whereas Vince is an old school minded person, you know, he talked about it's like, well, you know, people just, you know, that that whole thing where like, well, they don't talk to them and think they're pissed. And, and like Triple H is like the great mediator of professional wrestling right now, you know, that has accomplished this with uh uh, uh you, you know the hall of fame and getting the guys in there that he has you know um i don't know you guys have any other thoughts on that before we move on uh, about china Did the um i mean the triple h thing forgive me if i've got this wrong but triple h in china was an item for a long time right exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so so was he talking about the generic eight-year-old that searches for china or was he talking about his kids i mean his kids search for china they're gonna find out that that's triple h's ex- I you know I, I don't have kids, but I'm pretty sure a lot of parents don't want the kids to to know that mummy and daddy was in a relationship elsewhere and things like that. And there's a lot that was said about that. So if they start googling that, you know, a lot of things could be thrown up about mummy and daddy that you don't necessarily want your kids to find out. And I, I think we forget that as much as they run a company, they are people at the end of the day. Um, and that's that's Vince's grandkids. That's Triple H's kids. That's Stephanie's kids, you know, I mean, do, do they want all that dragging out in front of their mm-hmm. still young child? So the pawn thing might not have been necessarily the whole thing what it was alluding to. Right. Well, right. I don't think the porn thing is entirely what the deal is because, I mean, you have to think 
the first porn train that did, who was the other person in that porn? Oh, wait. It's the guy Damien Sandow was just impersonating two weeks ago on Raw. I mean, it, it was X-Pac and right. China in a right. porn. So, I mean, but again, I, I X- think it has more... Like Sorry. Sort of that. Yeah, it was like, but again, Xbox is another guy that's come around. You know, he had problems. Sure. He's come around. I, he has I, a... I mean, all right, I just Googled China WWE. Just see what comes up. Yeah. Third link on there is a whole link about um, how, like, she does this movie called Backdoor to China. Yeah. How she's in Red Light District video. How yeah. Yeah. she's teaming up with porn legends. And she was She-Hulk in an X-rated Avengers parody. Which I've seen and it's disturbing, but like I I can see what he means because that's just a generic search for China WWE and that's the third thing that comes up, and the first two things that comes up are the stories come out today mm-hmm. about her. Oh, of course, about of course. So um, so I want to get to some other stuff here. Zero, our Patreon supporter uh, from the WrestlingRevolution.com. So you get another plug in there when you fight right in. Um. <laughs> He has lots of thoughts. No time for introduction. Let's get to the point. Triple H, Mr. Hunter Hearst Assembly, Mr. COO, Mr. Cerebral Stress, S- Assassin. Oh, jeez. Uh, you're full of poppycock and your words are full of bullshit. I don't think he's happy about this. Um, case number one. Says a, quote, white, face, white meat baby face doesn't appeal to everybody and that there's no one on the roster who, who everyone likes. Yes, but it's obvious some receive the better crowd reactions in every city, while some others get booed here and there, even when you play them uh, as the biggest heel, heels. The biggest baby face, I'm sorry. Jeez. Um, case number two. Quote, you can't, you can't be a promo guy. You can't be an in-ring guy with no promo. You have to have a personality. Was the quote. Uh, Rowan Reigns is literally none of these. Ambrose or Rollins are literally all of them. Who is main fanning WrestleMania 31? The looks guy. That's right. I, you know, um, first note Roman's on that. Roman's in ring is not bad. No, Roman, Roman's not bad in the ring. I mean, he's not Seth Rollins. He's not Daniel Bryan. He's a presence. He is a look. I mean, he's not got Giant Gonzalez, you know, but, in the uh, ring. Isn't that also Brock Lesnar? I mean, let's be honest. Brock Lesnar, not the best promo in the world. Brock Lesnar okay, doesn't true. really have much of a personality. True. Like when Brock has to talk for himself, right. sans Paul Heyman, it's kind of shit. Who is a better interview, <laughs> Heyman or I'm sorry, uh, Brock or Reigns? Uh, that's tough. Okay, let, let, let's sit on that. Let us know on Twitter. Let us know on Twitter what do you think about that. Let's not not go around on that one. Case number three from Zero. Everybody works hard. Reigns works as hard as anyone else. So if everyone works equally as hard, then shouldn't the brass ring go to whoever is simply better among them all and gets the best crowd reactions? I, I think that's a broader issue myself. Um, but dear, but he ends, dear, dear Mr. Hunter, at least Vince told it as he believes it, not bullshitting around. I'm not done. Bear with me, WMS, but WWE just booked Brian versus Reigns for the number one contender spot. Really? Were there hearts left that needed to be broken? Are you seriously setting yourself up for another backlash? Most were getting into the idea of Reigns Lesnar after last Monday, and now you've come up, come, now you come and do this. This is this this show I see. This is the show I see playing out. After Reigns pins uh, Brian clean, Daniel Bryan will hold Reigns' hand and lift it in the air in approval, then The Rock will come out and grab Reigns' other hand and have a double sign of approval. <laughs> Suddenly, we hear a familiar tune in Philly Arena, and CM Punk, Stone Cold, and Bruno San Martino will return the WWE <laughs> and hoist Reigns <laughs> up on his shoulders. akata San and El Santo will send gifts from the foreign lands in the light of God. Macho Man and Warrior will enlighten their new savior. <laughs> We can, um, sword, we, we, we can talk about this on Twitter with the hashtag, hashtag Ro- Roman Reigns Supreme. Sorry for the long email. I just had a, a lot of rant to release. Watch Lucha Underground and Midweek War. Zero out. P.S. Here's a picture of Pink Eye Cena. Oh, damn. I just closed it. But no, here is a picture of Pink Eye Cena for you oh, guys. Oh, man. Next time I go to Taco Bell, I'm totally ordering a Roman Reigns Supreme. <laughs> so, so, yes, yes, Matt. I, I don't. 
I don't believe Punk would come back for that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Is that the one issue that you have with that scenario? What What if and, they just had Corey Graves with wrist tape? And I, and I just want to say one more. I just want to say one thing to Zero, and it goes back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago. And I, I, I you know, Zero's the man, but bro, brother, how do you know you're not getting worked? How do you know? <laughs> You're not getting worked. That's that's all I that's all I can say. And that's that that just goes back to what I was thinking after the podcast is how <laughs> deep how? does it go? No, none of us knows. Amazing. Point, could could we be seeing uh, Roman Reigns versus The Rock, and this is the setup for that? You know, like like Roman Reigns blaming The Rock for coming out and screwing him out of the the chance at the Rumble, so he loses to Brian, and then you know. What storyline would be good for The Rock? It would be a family thing if it's not going to be a championship thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it would make what, does he want to put his cousin up? Roman a heel versus The Rock at WrestleMania? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, wouldn't everybody be wanting Roman to win that match kind of thing secretly? That, that's, a, that's, a Actually, I, I, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I did like it whenever they were all peer pressuring Roman into taking this deal. We're like, hey. Roman, put up your rumble shot. Don't be a don't be a, a coward. And I was just I was yelling at the TV. I'm like, say no, Roman. Walk away. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Like Brian and the authority were on the same side of an argument for once. Right. For different exactly. reasons, but they were saying the same thing. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's the John Cena thing. Anytime you want John Cena to do something, tell him he's a coward if he doesn't do it. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I don't back down from a fight. Are you saying there, are you saying Roman Reigns is Marty McFly? No. What are you, Roman? <laughs> Chicken. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> All right, we got one more thing, and this is I, I think this uh, loosely kind of ties email in. To Sork. What's that? We got another one. Yeah, from Dudders. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. That's what oh, I okay. have. Uh, um, Dutters, Katie, uh, Lady of Mayhem. Uh, hello, wrestling hotties. Huh. Uh, I wonder. Uh, I was wondering if hey. you saw a Yahoo article by the finance guy Jeff Mackey stating the three reasons the WWE is doomed. And she says she saw this like at the bottom of her Yahoo page. I will not judge her for having a Yahoo page. Um, the reasons he listed are aging talent and the disconnect between younger talent and older fans, injuries pushing the limits of its stars, and Vince McMahon, what if something happens to him? I was actually surprised Yahoo was featuring this article, by the way, in the finance section of Yahoo. Um, what do you think of his reasoning? I hope you caught my boy Stone Cold's podcast last night with Triple H. Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, can he save the WWE? Um, I think, one, this is... That a finance guy is looking in the, in this aspect, and I think these are all things that we've kind of talked about before. We're concerned about the nostalgia factor they're doing with WWE, and it might be a crutch right now. Uh, although a very good crutch for pushing WWE Network, got to got to be honest. And we didn't have Triple H talking about how that's a hardcore audience. That's why NXT works so well over there. Um, my thoughts. Sir, can I jump in here? Real quick? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, it, it, because I, I'm sure some of you guys have read some of these business related articles whenever they start to talk about WWE and they're always always the sense that investors are uneasy about a future WWE where Triple H is in charge and Vince McMahon is is no longer there and I think when you watch again we're going back to a podcast that I have just told you may or may not have been real but when you're <laughs> looking at Triple H's appearance on the podcast the other night and you compare it to Vince and you hear Austin ask Triple H about a guy, and Triple H will be like, well, maybe uh, if he can do this, if he can do that, uh, maybe he could uh, do it, or maybe he won't, and maybe this and maybe that. And then you go back to the Vince McMahon podcast, and Austin's like, what's up with Cesaro? And Vince is like, Cesaro's not good enough. Screw it. And you see that <laughs> real difference between decisive Vince and what Triple H may or may not be. As and, far as his management style, and, and right, I think that might be something that makes um, the and, uh, the business world a little uneasy. And right or wrong, he's decisive. And, and, and if anything else, Triple H is an unproven commodity. I mean, he's a wrestler, you know. Versus Vince has been a businessman and had had twenty WrestleManias on his belt before he had an IPO, right? So that, there's a difference there. Um, well, I mean, if Triple H is in charge of NXT, 
that's a pretty good track record so far. Yeah, but if you look at any any business, uh, any regular business uh, that's not the WWE, um, anytime there's a power shakeup at the top for whatever reason, it makes investors nervous because that means it's going to be going in a, mo in a new direction. It doesn't really matter unless you've got Steve Jobs taking over at the helm. And uh, but to Katie's point about this article, the aging talent, I don't think WWE has an issue with that mm -hmm. because the article cites Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Right. Come I, on. I, the, oldest, the oldest active guy that's there week in, week out is maybe Kane. Right. And Big Show. Other than that, they have a very good crop of young talent. Yeah. The, the worry is who's the next John Cena to, to do the stratospheric numbers that, right. that he does. And that's the concern. Not do we have enough people to fill out the show? You got plenty of people, and you got a whole nother crop ready to eat their lunch out of NXT. That's not an issue. The future is bright as far as the talent goes. Um, it's just management, really. I mean, it, it, you know, well, what are they doing with this? And again, it's a bigger problem, and they're dealing with new issues that have never been properly applied to the wrestling industry. Um, look at the last time a big company got involved with pro wrestling. We got WCW, and that story that we were repeatedly told, you know, over and over again. Um, and that's what I worry about is, does something happen, Vince McMahon is not in charge, but WWE becomes a subsidiary of somebody else. Um, I fear for that day, and unfortunately because of the financial industry, I fear they will be pushed into something like that sometime within the next 10 years. Disney buys WWE. I, I'm gonna say, yo, hey, Disney <laughs> can buy WWE. I'm cool with Disney, that. You Disney buying WWE would be one of the best things to yeah, ever listen, happen to them. Disney, Disney, you can buy Nintendo, buy WWE. I'm cool. Pick up He-Man while you're at it. Then we, we might we actually get, get a wrestling game on a Nintendo system. There you go. Exactly. We exactly. might actually get a good wrestling game. Right. All <laughs> right, guys. Let us know all your thoughts on that. Thank you, everybody, for your emails. Uh, drop those down to uh, good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Good times. That's, right, that's right. That's right. That's right. I like to integrate them a little bit here, having fun with that. Uh, we'll be right back with the big question and, of course, our Mayhem Mania. Uh, but first, I want to, uh, Dan, um, um, uh, real quick, you are with, you're a little bit of a video game company guy, as we mentioned briefly earlier. Uh, we talked to you way back in 2011. I shared the video around today. Uh, we were talking about wrestling manager, and you got a new thing coming up soon on consoles, right? Can you tell us a real quick a little bit about that, and how, how's that going? Things are going really good. Um, we're, we're this close to finishing. This nice. I mean, tiniest little. By the end of this week, that game might be finished. Kind of that close. Oh, wow. Yeah, we are, we've been working on this for for three years now, so to be that close is is pretty amazing on our end. And it's all about to get crazy now. Um, we've you know we're going to GDC, which is a games development conference. Uh, then that's in San Francisco, and then we're heading over to PAX, uh, which is in Boston, and then to WrestleCon. We've got a booth at WrestleCon this year, or, nice. or at least it's in the works. So um, the footage that you see in there, I should point out, is just clipped together footage from like over a year ago. The right. game's looking a hell of a lot smoother now, and you know that's really old footage. Looking at it, <laughs> I should have sent you guys some new footage of it. Um, so yeah, there's you know there's some some new stuff in there that I don't think anybody's seen before in a wrestling game. Um, you know, like the ability to. Uh, work a guy's leg and take his leg from under him, and then if he tries to do his like, you know, lift up moves, he, his knee might crumble and then he'll fall over. Um, so if, if you remember Brock Lesnar in the cage when he picked Triple H up for the F5, his knee buckled and he couldn't get the move out. We've got that kind of thing. Or like Rusev having to put on a one arm uh, accolade on uh, Swagger. Yeah, I mean, we're not quite as as detailed as that with the one arm accolade kind of thing. <laughs> we would hope to get there in time. Um, you know, and this kind of follows on with our trend from Wrestling Manager. I, you know, we have guys on there like the Overtaker and stuff like that. Um, so instead of having Brock Lesnar, we have Ragnarok the Conqueror. And, and I just want to point out as well, we had Ragnarok the Conqueror before Brock Lesnar was the Conqueror. Um, and you can check that out because we, we posted that long before and I'm not saying they took it from us because they just threw it away as a comment on Raw one time but <laughs> you know um, was, there, was there a reason you guys didn't call him Bork Laser 
Oh yeah, because we figured some guy on the internet would like come out of nowhere <laughs> and be like, I did that. That was me. Uh, and then we screwed or some. So, but uh, you know, we felt Ragnarok the Conqueror, and you know, we put like a bit of a, a me first behind him with what his finishing moves are called and stuff. And uh, yeah, no, it's it's more about how we want to develop these characters down the line. We want players to know that when they're picking the guy up, that he's going to have certain moves and and roughly who the guy is going to feel like. We want to then give him our own character and our own feel, at, you know, long term. So, awesome. uh, Barkle is a bit of a creation in him, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's us. Uh, we're Like I say, we're, we're this close to finishing. And uh, nice. it, it's felt like we've been close for a long time, but we're literally within days now. Cool. So, where can people find this uh, when it comes out? What's what's the ex- guesstimated time frame at this point? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, we're nearly finished, but I still can't give that weird just because there's processes that you've got to go through on the back end. Of course. That I don't know. So, I, I don't want to say it'll be next week or the week after because this could take a month. Right, um, right, right. But we're not talking like six months, you know? We're talking in. In the, in the very, in, hopefully, in time for WrestleMania. Um, awesome. Fingers crossed. Uh, so, yeah, and then you'll be able to find it on the PlayStation Network. The game launches worldwide. Um, you know, it's, it's a much bigger pro- project than what Wrestling Manager was for us. This is, this is a huge project. The guys have got, like, um, you know, 180 moves for some of the characters in there and stuff, which is, which is more than what you get in the WWE games. Um, so that's, you know, to give you an idea of just how, that's per character. Um, and they've got like unique moves each, all of, you know, it's, it's a big thing for us. Awesome. Awesome. Can't wait to see how that goes. And I might have to, is it PlayStation three or four or PlayStation three? Uh, we, we started this, like I said, three years ago before right. anybody even mentioned the PS four. And then we were, you know, we're three quarters of the way through development and they was like, Oh, here's the PS four. And we just. You know, to switch, it's very expensive. Oh, so of course, we, of course. And get that the dev kit, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I'll just have to pick up a used one here, I guess. Uh, anybody selling one, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that and let us know when it, it gets out there. We'll definitely talk about it on the show. So, awesome. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you want to support uh, hey, support something that's cool. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, uh, so, sorry, Dan, you're, you're kind of out there. I don't know if we can send one overseas here. Uh, but Slice on Broadway, they're just up the street here. Some great pizza uh, going on here uh, in South Hills of Pittsburgh if you're in the area. Uh, or you're visiting. Uh, it, it, you can get off the exit for Carnegie, get right on Main Street as well in Carnegie, PA, on the way out the uh, International Airport, you know, if you're coming in from the U.K., Dan, if you're visiting you sometime, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but go check them out. They, it's great uh, uh, pizza from scratch, and uh, all all the best ingredients they can get their hands on. Uh, check them out at sliceonbroadway.com, and please follow them on Twitter, uh, slice uh, underscore pgh on there, as well as uh, Instagram and Facebook, and let them know the Wrestling Mayhem Show sent you. I mean, and even if you just wish you lived in Pittsburgh, to check them out. So check them out and, and thank them for supporting uh, podcasts in Pittsburgh with pizza. So with that, like I said, we'll be right back with the big question. This is Raymond Rowe, and you are listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. All right, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for that big, big moment of the week. It's the big question with Papa Lunchbox. Take it away. Hi, everybody. It is time for the big question. Uh, and uh, the big question this week has been it's been plaguing my mind all week long. So this year at the Royal Rumble, a lot of people were upset. And the source of that being upset was that Daniel Bryan didn't do so well in the Royal Rumble. Uh-huh. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, last year with the Royal Rumble, a lot of people were upset. And I think the source of that was because they thought Daniel Bryan was going to come out and he didn't. We can take away, I think, the the unifying theory from the internet is that everybody loves Royal Rumble. I mean, (laughs) everybody loves Daniel Bryan and they (laughs) want him to win. (laughs) My question to the assembled panel is, if Daniel Bryan was not a factor, if Daniel Bryan did not exist, would we still have this trouble? I'm going to say yes. 
because I feel like there were a few other people who could have had a better story going into WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar. I think Dolph Ziggler is one of them. I think Bray Wyatt is one of them. I think Rusev is one of them. I think Dean Ambrose is one of them. Like I, I think Roman Reigns made more sense when the Shield was together against uh, the Authority, when they had turned on the Authority, and also because no one wants to see Batista. I think this year, I think even Roman Reigns could have been okay. It was just the way they did it. But I don't think I don't think Daniel Bryan necessarily is the big factor. I think the only reason a lot of people think he's the big factor is because he never lost the belt. So you think they would find someone else to rally behind? Yeah, Dolph Ziggler, easily. I All mean, right. he was the guy who saved Survivor Series. True, true. Matt Carlins? Yeah, I'm kind of with Mike on this one. The internet will always find its next darling. Um, so even if Daniel Bryan had retired at the middle of next year, God forbid, the internet would have moved on to Ambrose or Cesaro. You know, I think you're right that Ziggler was basically positioned like Bryan until Bryan got back. Um, he could have fallen right into that spot too. And, you know, honestly, there will come a point. I know it's unbelievable at this point, but there will come a point where the Internet is done with Daniel Bryan and we will move on to somebody new. I don't know who that's going to be, but we're going to move on eventually. <laughs> it's all the, the Internet. The Internet love for a wrestler is always just a breakup waiting to happen. And uh, <laughs> someday that day will come. It's going to be Mojo Raleigh. It's going to be Mojo Raleigh. No. <laughs> wow wow by the way uh, mojo raleigh just endorsing our friend of the show jock sampson on twitter earlier tonight so that's, how, that's, how, he started, that's how he started sorg chew on that for you a see moment. Where i told you he was all right chew on that for a moment um <laughs> what we got here dan uh how's that pizza <laughs> yeah i'm just getting started with this bad boy <laughs> Got, Wait, how did you get sliced on Broadway? Sword, did you send him pizza? Oh man. Did you send him transcontinental pizza? Transcontinental. They actually do have a have a, a branch in Scotland. Damn it. <laughs> we don't talk about it much on the show, but Broadway Scotland. You're, yeah, Broadway Broadway Avenue, Scotland. <laughs> There's one Broadway Avenue, right? <laughs> Dan, Dan, do you have any thoughts between shoes? Sorry? Do you have any thoughts on the big question between shoes here? Yeah, I, I don't think Roman, um, sorry, I don't think Daniel Bryan's is anything to do with the problem for Roman Reigns. If anything, I think that's a WWE-led storyline. Um, you know, like him getting thrown out of the rumble early, and then the cameras zooming in on him and being like, "Oh, it's a surprise." Obviously, the crowd was going to be down on that. But if he wasn't even in the rumble, the, the, that Royal Rumble crowd would have booed the crap out of Roman Reigns. I said it long before the rumble started. It's, it's nothing to do with. Uh, Brian not winning. It's to do with the the machine getting behind uh, Roman Reigns, and we all knew that. We all knew that long before the Rumble even came. We knew that before Brian came back. Right? If Brian hadn't come back at all, Roman still goes on to win it, and and he gets booed to death because the fans don't want to see the next John Cena getting pushed. They want to see a Dolph Ziggler or somebody like that. They don't, you know, they. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with what the guys have said before. I don't think it was it was Daniel Bryan as such. I, I don't I don't even think the fans was necessarily as behind Bryan as what they could have been. You know, it, it felt more like they just wanted to hit on a rant. Mm -hmm. Certainly, certainly. Um, before I forget you, I'm sorry I forgot LB last week. Uh, LB, what, what's your thoughts before I go to uh, uh, the rest of the guys here? Uh, I feel like um, I feel like Daniel Bryan was a factor to a certain degree because they got a taste of him. Uh, what they got a taste of what they wanted when he had the title and everything like that. And I, and I agree. Um, the fact that he didn't get his rematch was part of it as well. Um, but I mean, I, I also agree that, um, the internet is always going to find something to hate and something to complain about. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like uh, Daniel Bryan is a, is a rallying cry. It's, it unifies opinions um, more so than if, you know, they didn't have 
him to hold up as a shiny example as the kind of the opposite of Roman Reigns and the opposite of John Cena. You know what I mean? I don't know. All right. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town's with us uh, at Bobby F. Bobby F. J. Town on the Twitters. Uh, what, what is, what's your answer to the big question here? I think um, since the crowd was like – they were behind Daniel Bryan, but once he got eliminated, I think they they focused on Dolph Ziggler and uh, Dean Ambrose, and even you know like somebody said even Bray Wyatt, and it was the way that they were eliminated that I think ticked fans off even more. And like like Dean was the last hope, and when he was eliminated, everybody knew that you know Roman Reigns was was going to win, you know. But uh, and, then, and then Rusev coming in at the end was like, "You can fix this. You can fix this," and they didn't fix it. So I think everybody was just mad that like Roman Reigns. Everybody he was the odds-on favorite to win it like from the get-go from last year, and this year, you know, yeah. By the he way, won. this Justin and Bobby, if you can drop out so we can try to get Riz in here for this. Okay. Um, we did get a clarification. Uh, Zach Gallen says, "Nope, he was not in a Royal Rumble ever." So. Huh. I wonder what the hell I'm thinking of. I don't know. I, I think you're just thinking of the fact that I joked about Zach Gallon being in the Rumble so much. That's true. That, that's a possibility. Because I said if he came out with one leg, there's no way he could be eliminated. And then you like dreamt. If he, if he came out without the prosthetic leg and, no, and maybe, like, I don't know, sent it home to his folks, there's no way he could be eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> Eamon, Eamon uh, is joining us. His, his, he he found his thoughts in earlier, of course. Uh, Eamon, what, what's your thoughts on the big question? Um, personally, I feel that with the... I, I definitely agree with Bobby in the sense that you can tell with the crowd that once Daniel Bryan was eliminated, they were trying to latch onto something else. Um, I think that was kind of one of the biggest factors. And it was the reason, I think, why Daniel Bryan was so you know, big of a factor. I do think without Daniel Bryan, in a world without Daniel Bryan, I think, yeah, we would have had a different scenario. I don't know if Roman Reigns would have gotten as over uh, as people would um, have expected. But, yeah, I do think it was a big factor. I think Daniel Bryan, and I, I kind of disagree with what um, uh, Matt said about how, you know, sort of indie wrestling fans or, or internet fans kind of, you know, latch on to a person and then, you know, get rid of them. I think Daniel Bryan's one of the exceptions to that. I think he's somebody that people have supported and, and have appreciated since the very beginning. Um, and I think he's had one of those enigmas that, that, that comes with that. So I, I think he was a big factor in, mm -hmm. in what happened. I, I, I want to just clarify that uh, I, I don't mean to indicate that the, uh, that the hardcore – Internet fans would ever turn their backs on Daniel Bryan. Um, <laughs> even though I'm sure some of them might come up with a reason someday, God forbid. But uh, I, I just think that, like, um, yeah. when, 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 when you put all your efforts to see your guy succeed and he finally does, you can't help but start to look around and be like, okay, who are we going to get next? Who are we going to get to the top of the card next? Um, and I think kind of like once Bryan reached the pinnacle and won at the main event at WrestleMania – that was kind of a sense I got. I was like, okay, who are the fans going to find next to, to kind of latch on to and be their guy? Yeah, I get to that. Zack Ryder. Also, <laughs> <laughs> also joining us for the big question is the Riz at the E Riz on the Twitter. You can check out his new shirt. Uh, if you check out our Spreadshirt uh, shop, we got a link over at SolarTronMedia.com. It's, like, it's like this. It's be like this Riz. Sword. You can be it's Riz. Check out that. Buy the T-shirt. Support the I show. I need a stunt double sword. If y yes, you do. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> Especially, I just imagine you because we talked about silver sneakers the other day, and you just like have a pantomime of doing the so silver sneakers. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that, that's a different podcast. I'm sorry. sorry. Anyways, I'm sorry. What's your answer to the big question? Um, I agree with Matt Garland. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it just seems like no matter. In this, for the past two years, we have been backing one horse, or or we've been backing a lot of horses. And when they don't win, 
when they get eliminated by one of the other 30 guys, we get angry and upset. Mm -hmm. And that's, and, and this is why I'm going to say right now, Roman Reigns is getting this push. Kind of in due part to last year's Royal Rumble. And then he, and then just like Matt said, whenever that happened, Whenever he got that push, he started to find out that he was the guy. And everybody started to find out he was the guy. So to, to the point is, um, after that, you know he's going to win the Rumble. But you want somebody else to be there. And if Daniel Bryan wasn't there, Dolph Ziggler was there, Rusev was there, and everybody was starting to back Rusev. It's, it's that nice little circle of life where now circle if Rusev <laughs> was going to be a thing and wanting to be a good push, they're not going to like that either. They're going to find something else to hate. And that that's just me. I don't know if it's anybody else. If It's it's just to the point where I can't – like the Royal Rumble is supposed to be enjoyed, correct? Right. In, in, theory, in theory, not to interrupt, I'm sorry. In theory, any wrestling event should be enjoyed. Yes. Yes, it, in theory. But for the past two years, it hasn't because our guy, A, wasn't in it, and B, didn't win it. So it's just to the point where it's just like, okay, here comes Roman Reigns now going to win this. So... There's always going to be – this is the Royal Rumble we're talking about. There's 30 other guys in there. Somebody's going to pick somebody different. And that's why – nobody's going to be happy. Not everybody's going to be happy. And it just so happens to be that a lot of people aren't happy. All right. I think we got everybody here, right? Right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. good. We're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. um, sort of, sort of, did you answer? I think sort of? I did. I think I was one of the first. Yeah. Probably. Wait. Oh. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't have to. What do I think? Sword. If we didn't have Daniel Bryan. No, I, I'm really, I, I, I agree with that. I think we're just going to pick somebody else. I, I think I think if it wasn't Brian, it would have been a Seth Rollins or a Ooh. Dean Ambrose. I'm surprised we're not as pissed Dean Ambrose isn't getting more than he does. But he did main event of pay-per-view or two recently. So Not all of us can be Jen Carlin, Sork. I know. I know. <laughs> he, he's going to get fired next week. That's yeah. right. He's going to get fired next week. All right, guys. We And again, for this... Um, if you, uh, let us know, would, would, would we have these problems? Let us know on Twitter, hashtag, uh, WMS big question. Uh, would we have these problems if, it, if, uh, we didn't have Daniel Bryan, would we have the Roman Reigns problem? Would we have the reaction problems the last two uh, Royal Rumbles, for instance, uh, hashtag WMS big question this week for a chance to win. You ready for this guys? You ready for this guys? Oh. Best of CM Punk volume one. Oh shit. Oh, there it is. So can guy. I win? You I, no, you're not allowed to win. You can Sorry, you, you I, can participate. Do I win? No, no. Chris, it's Sam Punk taking on Chris Hero, Super Hentai, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, Jimmy Vegas, Sterling James Keenan, who might be somebody called Corey Graves now, who uh, might have just been at Royal Rumble actually uh, as a commentator. Surprisingly, uh, go check that out. And uh, for this last week's response, last week's question was. What went wrong with Roman Reigns' push, and how can WWE fix it? We had some responses. At Yaceon, uh says, uh, Reigns' push went south when fans stopped cheering for dudes Vince McMahon thinks is hot. Okay. Okay. Uh, Barbara out there. Uh, there go different ways on that now, one. I think, okay. I think Barbara is, is a little bit uh, skewed, but... But I agree with her. Uh, her her, her uh, uh, Twitter name is Justice Reigns 25 It's spelled that way, guys. Uh, but it says uh, they did the Royal Rumble in Philly. That was the problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Crispy uh, Kareem 15. Crispy Kareem is his name on here. Uh, I see what he did there. Um, I think... <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say it out loud, it makes more sense in your head, okay? I think of it. Your, your reaction was so happy that you figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> it's late. I need another one of these rehabs going on here. 
Um, he says, I think WWE Vince McMahon Triple H needs to bring back the World Heavyweight title and have Roman Reigns go for that title at WrestleMania 31. Ooh, yeah, bury idea. him at the beginning of the show like he did Edge and Del-, Del Rio that one time or whatever that was. Um, hey, yeah, they, they, that's what they do. That, that was their switch up. Like, oh, let's just have him do World Heavyweight and not really made it. Uh, and then we just did the thing, right? Dude. So, uh, for Christian. Tell you what, this week, this week, <laughs> since we only had three responses, all three of those guys are getting a copy of uh, RW, or, not, IWC's, sorry, sorry, uh, the IWC's Reloaded, uh, just featuring, of course, uh, uh, Colin Delaney, who is going to be on a future Indie Mayhem show soon, uh, the extremely cute wrestler from ECW, taking on Tommy Dreamer, uh, reliving his feud, and a very surprise uh, uh, kind of participation by uh, Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> Um, in the main event, actually. Also, uh, Virgil is on there, mm. if that really does it for you. And other great guys, friends, great guys, friends of the shows like RJ Style, the recently, uh, I guess, redebuting uh, big time thing in, in our uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, Dalton Castle is a part of this as well. Great photography there by our friend Daniel Hooven, we talked to on the Indie Mayhem show as well. Uh, but go check that out. If you didn't win, you can go check that out, pittsburghwrestling.com. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on over there, including the IWC's Reloaded. Recent releases like um, uh, uh, like uh, RWA's Uprising 7 featuring Sanjay Dutt and uh, uh, Mickey Knuckles in a mixed tag match against uh, Shane Andrews and Jesse Bell Smothers. Um, a lot of fun there uh, uh, happening. And, uh, great shows coming up. Um, there's sh- and also, a lot of these are on Smart Mark uh, a video as well, video on demand. You can look up IWC and maybe some other stuff. And some new releases is coming out very shortly for Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Um, a lot of fun happening, including Davey Richards is a part of that, I know. Um, and more recent shows with uh, guys like Rhino, guys like uh, Tomosa Ciampa. Um, so look for those releases at uh, PittsburghWrestling.com and IndieWrestling.us. Support uh, Indie Wrestling and support the show. So, with that, uh, this is the time, uh, and Mike, just, just give me a couple minutes. I, I just, right. just really, is, is there anything significant anything happen on Impact? happening no. on Impact Ironically, Wrestling? Ironically, it did, sort, because, you know, on the road to WrestleMania, you get a lot of twists and turns. Right, right, right. You get a fast lane, apparently, that we're all <laughs> supposed to go into, and I'm pretty sure it's a carpool lane. <laughs> is it you an know, HOV get- lane? It's a carpool lane. Oh, that's the same thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, because we all they all they want us to piggyback on top of Roman Reigns. So anyway, do you know what you get on the Dirty. road to lockdown Sorg? Title matches and incomplete main events. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> yes, on, on on impact this week. It's a um, formula, right? Sure. Sure. Um I am a chemical engineer and I can say that is a formula. It is a bad formula, but it is a formula. Um, so Impact this week, I mean, Eamon, you say nothing happened. We had two title matches, sir. We did. I remember <laughs> <laughs> who the champion is for either of those. Um, uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a three-way knockout title match. Uh, Taryn Terrell beat Gail Kim and Madison Rain, And oh. none of them are going to be on lockdown. Mm. Um there was a world title match where Bobby Lashley beat uh, Bobby Roode, uh, Austin Aries, and MVP. And we don't know if all of them are going to be on lockdown. And uh, I don't know. Things happen. I'm actually kind of excited for lockdown despite the god-awful build to it. Um, oh, and if you are a fan of John Cena versus Randy Orton... TNA brings you Jeff Hardy versus Abyss Monsters Ball 38. <laughs> they they had they had another one of those. Um, Abyss brought out a board full of nails that you literally cannot hit anyone with because it would kill them. So they do the same thing they do every single time. You clearly have not watched Japanese Deathmatch. On, all right, Amen, Amen. Those guys are immortal. Is Japanese deathmatch on Destination America? Oh, I, I, I'm sure that'd be a great spinoff series. That would make me get Destination America. Destination that would be Japan. Cable. Destination Japan. Um, cable plus like three tiers. Yeah, yeah. Much. I have. I have it. It's a, it's a lot. It's a big package. 
I have a big package. <laughs> That's anyway. what she said. Uh, what? <laughs> um, yes, a big cable package. By um, the way, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I was watching some interesting things. Oh shit! I'm sorry. I'm, uh, that was an accident. I was trying to cue him. I was trying to cue him. That was me. I'm sorry. I was trying to cue him. I didn't have his video up, and I'm I kept getting muted by Impact accident. Too. Sure. I'm sorry. It was an accident. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Um, okay. Okay. No, but, now I can show you. Yeah. Now you can show me. Uh, but I was watching some. I'm not gonna name any. Uh, okay. I was watching Deep Fried Paradise uh, or Deep Fried Masters. Um, <laughs> I love what? the shows. I love that these are actual shows. These are not these parodies. Are, these are actual shows. I love how uh, I'm not even during every commercial, they were promoting Impact Wrestling. Mm. But they were showing the same one over and over again, which leads me to this. They keep on showing The Fall. And mm-hmm. saying the fall is happening, and shows Jeff Hardy falling off a off a cage. Mm-hmm. That's well, kind of the point. Okay, of if you're fall. if you're yeah. hold on hold on if your predominant audience on your network watches a show called Deep Fried Masters. But, by the way, <laughs> it, it is it is you you should you should watch it. Apparently, I don't know how it's, it's more. I don't know how it's a, it's a more than one episode show. Oh, I'm pretty sure you can master. It's a contest. Months. They go to fairs. Um, but but my point is that kind of audience just wants to see a dude fall off a cage and hurt himself. Of course, true, true. This is yeah. Isn't that what yeah. professional wrestling fans want? In uh, not okay, in the okay. I, I, I want to bring this around a little no, bit. No, no, no. I was gonna say I thought or, they were big Game of Thrones fans. And they saw it work for one season, so why not another? Okay, mm. I want to bring this around a little bit since we do have a very uh, unique perspective. And we did do on gold a little bit of like, so what's it like in Britain? You know, or uh, Scotland, <laughs> right? you know, uh, kind of concept. But but obviously, and, and I've been seeing tweets from friend of the show, uh, DJ Zima Ion, talking about uh, how crazy <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I called him out. I was like, thank you for my friend that does that every time I mention your name. Um, when we talked to him a few weeks ago. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, so, so they're over there, and we're talking about the feeling here, and and how should Matt, Mike, you attend the shows in, at the Manhattan Center uh, when they come in town when they kick you free tickets? <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much the last couple times. Um, versus UK, it looks like it's a frenzy. It looks like people are into it. Dan, you're 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 on that side of the perspective. Like, what you you hear how we talk about impact here? Is it the same kind of? It can't be the same vibe. Looking at the size of the arenas, they apparently are doing uh, with a pretty, it seems, rabid fan base. Am, am I? Are they just like mixing the message here? Am, am I not getting the full picture here? What's it like over there with Impact Wrestling? You can't remember that uh, here in the UK, we can all get to every show that they do here. So That's if, true. There's a, if there's a, a TV show. On in London, you can get there from Scotland if you wanted to, or you, you know, I mean, it's going to be four or five hours to get down there. And I'm not saying that everybody goes to every show, but we have got a lot of hardcore fans over here, so you're going to get, you know, Cat Angle drawing big in, in certain places, and Bobby Lashley, and and Tina's, you know, it's it's for, for all of the crap that people give it, it's still got some some cool guys on there, right? I mean, there are, it is right. still a good wrestling show. We don't get many um, many big-name wrestling shows over here. We get loads of, like, really cool indie shows. You know, they, like, the indies over here do well, but they, they're only, like, four or 500 people going to them. But TNA is still seen as that next level, I think. It's still seen as, like, a big show over here. Um, I don't know how, because, you know, the network that it's on over here... No, nobody watches. <laughs> oh, so it's like Destination America. So you oh, is it Destination UK? Oh, no, we have <laughs> Inch TV. I think it's on over yeah. here. Like I, I, I watch my wrestling on the internet, so I, I don't know um, necessarily if that's what all fans are doing. But I'm, I'm fairly sure it's on Challenge TV, and they have like, um, you know, just any, any kind of quiz show that you might see is on <laughs> Challenge TV, and that's. <laughs> So it, it makes it makes even less sense than your your destination America or whatever it's on over there because it is just bundled by, you know, like uh, uh, 
name name any quiz show and that's probably what's on before you know it's like crosswords or something like that you, you know <laughs> imagine imagine you're there if you were right and yeah. you've just been watching crosswords which is just a quiz show with two guys on it and coming up next tna wrestling whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> but hey they're on a show over here and um you know it it does well i I would I would love to go to see more TNA events, and I'd I'd love to go see more more wrestling events in general. So. I, I I gotta say, I, and I don't want to attest to this, but from the footage that I have seen from the Glasgow uh, TNA Impact tapings, I'm convinced that the only reason that they should they sold out that building was because of Grado. Grado, yeah. Oh, Grado, I, I my pronunciation, because they are clapping and singing a Madonna, and he is over in 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 that building. That's so. right. He didn't he just do, or I think they canceled it, didn't they? He was supposed to be here in Cleveland for AIW. He's, he, he's coming up for an upcoming show for them. Okay, yeah. but he had to cancel the recent one because of TNA. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're doing their big, basically not to spoil things, but they're doing uh, for one of the tapings. They did the big blow off between uh, Grado and uh, Al Snow, um, so. I was unaware that there is even a blow off. Yeah, well, from the because they had kind of a food feud on British Boot Camp. Mm. Oh, oh hey. it's gonna be a rough couple weeks. <laughs> but no, Mike, watch watch some of the fan cam footage. Grado is over. Mm-hmm. He yeah. is over, mm-hmm. and there's and they played uh, Madonna's "Like a Prayer," which I'm assuming they won't be playing on the actual taping they that match may not even be for tv and it because may I not no, I, I wish no it is because the crowd is actually like into it because mm-hmm. i have no idea who the fuck you're talking um about. oh by the who is al snow oh al snow i was like did you, <laughs> you better know who grado is or grado i'm sorry uh actually, but no, actually, i don't even you keep changing the pronunciation i, don't know I apologize because i thought i knew what the pronunciation was but um but no, um, it will be. I'm assuming it will be featured on TV because uh, the post match stuff on it features a certain debut. Uh oh. Um, oh God! Yeah. Don't spoil no, it. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> All right, that's enough impact. That's enough. That's enough. I want some mayhem mania. And if I find the button for him, we can get the guy with the board. Are you trying to look at Matt Carmen? Oh, no. yeah, I'm trying to. Well, I'm trying to find like, him over there. Oh wait. Oh hey. Uh, don't mute uh, him. Like oh, hold on. Uh, uh, Matt, Matt. Matt. It's time for the Mayhem Mania. I'm sorry. We had we had to put Impact before this, but uh, we've got to fit in somewhere. What's up, Sorg? You got the board. I don't know if you saw. I put. I, I devised. Let me know if that is acceptable. I think six six moves is pretty good here. Um, but uh, I, I think that's going to be our order for tonight, if you're all right with that. I put you in there because you haven't contributed uh, officially to, to them other than... And, and it's more fun to be the games master, but I'll take the last yeah, move. Yeah, you should, you I'll should. show everybody how it's done. I've got the measuring stick tonight. Actually, I put, um, actually, I, actually, I put you up first. Oh, excellent. Even better. <laughs> so, so all my hard work can be undone. For those, uh, for I'll try to think of something here while I run down okay. the card here real quick. For, for our guests right now, uh, can you, uh, and everybody else, this might be the first time checking this out. What is Mayhem Mania? What quickly? What is it? And what are we doing here this week? Mayhem Mania is not really a game. It's more like a thought experiment. <laughs> it's a style um, of life. <laughs> what we're trying to do <laughs> is create the best WrestleMania card we possibly can. Not necessarily predict oh, okay. what the WrestleMania card will be but to try to make the best WrestleMania card we can make in the realm of reality. This has to be actually plausible and possible. So don't go bringing me somebody contracted to another wrestling organization and try to bring out what in the holy hell is What's going, going on, on over there. Are you all right I over there? I think they're watching back episodes of The Blacklist since so every 45 minutes they start <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Not lying. Uh, so, Dan, here, here's basically what we do is we, we, we create a, uh, a card here of eight matches. I cannot see any of and that. And then we the will uh, – oh, I'll, I'll recap it for you. <laughs> we, we create a card of eight matches, and then we allow the members of the Mayhem universe to make a single move to the card. Um, either they can swap a wrestler between the matches, swap a wrestler or a team between the matches, or they can um, add a wrestler – to one of the matches that are already here, make it like an extra three-way handicap, whatever you want yeah. to do. You just flat out take a whole match, trade it out, bring in a whole new match that uh, doesn't include any of the wrestlers that were uh, that, that uh, unused. I'm sorry. People are running around here. Damn you, <laughs> Reddington. 
Black Panther. That's alone. I want my life. Anyway, uh, Dan, you'll you'll get how things are going as we move along here. So let's uh, Sorg, if if I may, let, let me uh, recap where we are. Here go for it. Go for matches. it. Sure. Uh, first of all, we've got the main event: the unimpeachable Rusev versus the Undertaker. We've got Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn versus Cesaro, Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton, The Miz versus Damian Mizdow, John Cena versus Roman Reigns, I'll get to that one, Brock Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt, and an original creation of the Mayhem Universe, the re-retirement match, Triple H and Ric Flair versus Sting and Shawn Michaels. Now, um, hey, um, Honey, your wife of the show, wife of the mainstream of the show. Do you want to make a move instead of me? Do you want to make one change? This your boy's not on here. You guys don't mind if I let give. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we got her. Really yeah, sure. One move. She's gonna put Damien Stan- there. Um, so where would you like to add Dean Ambrose onto this card here? Honey? He's not here. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> took him off last week. Huh. LB. Uh huh. We tattled. Well, that's because he's gonna be fired in a week. All right, move fast. It's clock's ticking here, hon. How much, how much How much? time do I have? Oh, like 10 seconds or so. 10 seconds. Get rid of Cesaro. Get rid of that. What? Whoa. Cesaro. No. Anyways, let's put Ambrose in. Good yeah, idea, right. So we got Sami Zayn versus uh, Dean Ambrose? Sami Zayn versus Dean Ambrose. That's a main event anywhere. Mine was so much better. <laughs> I see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know parts. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that she just drew the end of a penis. That is a penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just the end of a penis. Uh, yep. <laughs> All right, who's up next? Uh, Sorgatron. Uh, we got uh, Mad Mike is up next, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, Mad Mike. I'm yes, sorry. yes, yes. That really is the head of a penis. Oh, uh, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you better not be talking about me, you fucking penis. <laughs> No, no, no! no I'm t- I, I finally get to see the board. The camera head. goes to me, and Eamon says, "That really is the head of a penis." No, I'm sorry, but I just saw the full screen of the of the thing, and that is not a heart. And uh, don't right. backpedal, Eamon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, hey, hey, Matt, Matt. Um, can say you, it. Say can it, you Mike. Tell me what that re-retirement match is again. The re-retirement match. Mm-hmm. Um, I, we barely, this barely got through. I, I, yeah. And the more I think about it, the, the less sure I am. Triple <laughs> H and Ric Flair versus Sting and Shawn Michaels. Um, Mike? I'm gonna kill it! <laughs> I'm gonna kill it! With a lethal dose of divas. Yes. Wait, no! Oh, wow! Yes. Yes. Match for a divas match? Oh. Yes. And that Wait, divas what's the, match... what's the divas match? Let me, let me get to it. Charlotte versus Paige. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. I'll take it. Yes. I'll take it. So are we allowed to add matches or is this just... You're only allowed to add a match if you delete one match. If I her. delete another one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wait, we've got rid of Sting out of WrestleMania? Yeah. Sting is in the clear. Do what you want with him. What was the bottom one? Yeah. Like I should it. also clarify, Dan, that uh, uh, the bottom one is Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt. So if you can't read, I, and I put it in the chat, but if you can't read it, um, um, go to the, the, the mainstreammat.blogspot.com. Uh, round two is there, so you can see the matches as they were at the beginning of this, at least. Uh, oh. yeah, I want to I clarify for you that just because someone gets deleted um, doesn't mean they're gone forever. You can bring them right back if you want to. So let's right, move on. Right, right. Like, Dan, Dan, you're up right now, buddy. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change, um, yeah, Rusev versus Taker. Oh no! Oh, do it! Oh, do it! It's been untouched. As much as Rusev versus the American badass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a um, feeling that would be lost on you over there. <laughs> and, and this is gonna get booed to death, right? Is what I'm saying here. But I, I'm swapping out Taker for Hogan, right? And, oh. 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 Oh, Hogan. 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 I want to see Hogan in that. You know, in I want to see. I, I, and, and I want to see. I mean, like, if you think about it, I am a real American, right? I, You're I basically gotta, asking for the live paper. I have to put this to a vote. Do, do you guys feel like this is enough in the realm of possibility to put Hogan? That's I fine. Vote, I vote yes. Fine. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Never retired. Yeah, I want to see his back get broken. I don't even care. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Dan, Dan, are you are you just asking 
for the death of Hulk Hogan to be nine ninety nine. <laughs> that's that, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes, is if, if Bruce gets Hogan in that lock and he chokes him out, that might be enough to provoke the. You know, like he could hold it on after the bell. That might be enough to provoke the Rock into coming out, and then he could have been the Apollo Creed dying against. Uh, <laughs> wow. uh, that, that's you want to reverse Rocky Four? Yeah, that's exactly exactly the way I would go there. They may as well just see it out. We've already got, you know, the Dolph Lundrum, <laughs> the kind of character. And you can imagine the American flag waving at the same time, and then Bruce up just destroying Hogan, you know. Oh, I would love it so much. Wow. All right, who's up next here? The Riz, you're up next, pal. I'm up next. Um... <sighs> Now, about, mind, so now for, the, for the matches... Hey, hey, hey Riz, I'm just saying, Sting and Taker are both free now. I know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're going to remain free. Yes, please. <laughs> um, so if, if there's a match that we want to take off that was already made, like today, are we allowed to do that? What? Yeah. Like, are, 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 are <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all free sure. game. It's all game. Sure, the nastier uh, the better. So, uh, take out the one that ruined everything for me, uh, Zane and uh, Ambrose. Oh, God damn it! no. I had, oh, <laughs> I had a way the to fix it. Time. I had a way to fix it. The whole match. God damn it, I had a way to fix it. Ambrose was on the WrestleMania card for two minutes. No, I had a way to fix it. God damn it. Nope. <laughs> We're going to add... Uh, the Usos. Oh, God damn it. Man. Tag team champions. <laughs> oh, man. Versus oh. Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. Uh-huh. Okay. I think we're getting that fast lane, though, right? Yeah, Don't but care. Whatever. Don't, don't, don't care. care. The Usos right. and Miz and Miz now got like 20 rematches. Fucking who cares? You say in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't add sips. Do something. Uh, okay, because I, I was next. Um, the uh, easy fix for this, if Riz would have not fucked it up, nope. was to just switch Zayn and Rollins and have Rollins Ambrose and Zayn Orton. Because Zayn Orton would be a really good match and would put Zayn over against the top guy. Oh. 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 No, I'm, not Eamon. I'm with Eamon. I think that's a great move. Yeah, I'm sorry. You think Sami Zayn and Randy Orton's going to be a fucking grown worthy match? We've got Cena Reigns on that card. <laughs> <laughs> this has been here second since second week point. one. No one's touching it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love how you're angry. Hey, hey, we this. gotta have well, one match for Vince, well, right? No, fuck that. <laughs> hey, Amy, what, Amen. what's your move, man? Amy, okay. full disclosure: if you fuck with that Cena Reigns match, I will fix it on my turn. <laughs> <laughs> that match is my baby. God damn it. Okay, well then, fuck, then you know what? Fine. Seth Rollins isn't going to get on the show either. I'm doing Zane Orton. Wow. <laughs> nice. uh, wow. I love it. Uh, why? He just, took, um, he just took the two good members of the Shield off the show. The, the spiteful <laughs> move by Eamon. Wow. <laughs> this is a hateful round. It's amazing. Riz fucked this up completely. No, I said I made it better because we have a tag team title match. Who cares? You could only sneak onto the card for two minutes, but but we couldn't stand to see Zayn off this card for more than 30 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) Have you seen one of his matches? Zayn Orton would be a good match. I've seen a few. Any matches. Uh, LB, LB, your turn. Now time for move six with LB. LB, can I uh, just just do your worst, man? We know. We know. We know what you want. What? No, tell me. What do I want? Oh, no, no. I was, I was, I was talking to uh, Carlin's. I know. Oh, there's a lot of talent there. out there. Okay. There is. I swear, that be don't fuck this up. <laughs> no, no, I am. Don't I'm, fuck it up. Because what I'm, what I'm thinking is I want to take this match, this not good match, and I want to make it worse. <laughs> oh, no. I want to I take my favorite match on the whole card. Oh no! John Cena versus Roman Reigns, and I want to I want to add an element to it that would make it more repugnant. Oh, oh god, no. I think I know what he's gonna say. I don't. I I can't. You're gonna say the Big Show, aren't you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Big Show! Yeah. You put Big Show and Kane in this son of a bitch. I swear to God. Oh shit! 
I didn't even think about Kane. Oh, no. This might be the... Matt, this oh, might no. be the greatest thing you have we have ever done on this show. No, because Big Show actually sucks. <laughs> <laughs> if Triple H and Sting are not on this card, and a fucking Big Show match well, makes it. Here's, here's, my, here's the thing. Okay, so we've got John Cena versus Roman Reigns. Yep. The Holy Grail of matches. Versus Triple H. What? I want it to be a triple threat. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying oh. handicap match. Oh, man. No. So it's a three Triple way. threat. Cena versus Reigns versus Triple H. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Hey, wow. I think Triple H will save that. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. He Triple had a good match with Brian last year. Triple H can still go. I don't think you can deny that's it. That's why I wanted to see him versus Sting, but fuck. Wow. Wow. So what do we got after that for six, another six after rounds? That, okay. I just want to... I just want to say, like, I, I kind of came into this a little bit worried that this was going to settle in and you guys weren't going to come up with anything, but you guys just F this thing up beyond repair now. <laughs> You're dropping bombs, Matt Carlins. Hey, Matt Carlins, yeah. you are welcome. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, Matt Carlins, it. what does WrestleMania 31 look like on this date? In the main event, <laughs> booked by Britain for America, Bruce America. versus Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Wow. To be fair, I think he booked that for Russia. <laughs> <laughs> he booked that for everybody but America. You've got to remember the rocks coming out after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's oh, shit. Deep. Can I please take my move back? No, no, no. No, 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 no it's no, no, next week. Rock, no, I wanted no, to be the rock. No, 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 oh, that would be so like, much worse. It's like LB. chess. Once you set the piece down and take your hand back, it's done. You can't take it back. Oh, the I didn't even think checkers. about The Rock. God damn it. It's always next week, sir. Save that for the go-home show. So yeah, many. How many more weeks of changes do we have? Until WrestleMania. Until WrestleMania. Until actual WrestleMania. Until WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Until WrestleMania. Until and then before actual WrestleMania, we'll throw this all in a simulator and see what happens. <laughs> we can do I, that. Which we can do. I have WWE 2K15. I'll live. I'll live Google Hangout the whole fucking thing. Oh, we're, we're watch partying that one. All right, uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan. The Usos versus the Masters of the WWE Universe. Kid and Cesaro. Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton. I'm on board. I like Thank it. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. The oh. Miz versus Damian Mizdow. Untouched since round one. This is the match no one will tamper with right here. Because it's the – why would you? Why would yeah, you tamper with, with it? John Cena you know, versus every Roman time Reigns we say that, we tamper with it. Oh, love, love talk, love talk. John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus Triple H. <laughs> Charlotte versus Paige. And hiding below the margin, Brock Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt. Round three. Okay, oh I have my. some ideas for changing. All right, all right. Well Next done, week, boys. you can play along. Let us know what you thought. Go to uh, mainstreammat.blogspot.com. Uh, we got links to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. He'll have a post up here with uh, all the changes and everything and, 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 and visualize what the card looks like right there. Right there. Check that out. You can participate there as well. Uh, so with that, it's time to learn what did you learn? from wrestling this week. I think we have a lot of education that happened here. Um, how about Riz? What do you have? Wow. Um, I learned that Triple H is not afraid to uh, run over his father-in-law <laughs> and then back up his onto his father-in-law and roll back over his father-in-law. Because, uh, holy fuck, he just buried his father-in-law. <laughs> I put I put a picture up while we were talking about Triple H earlier that was uh, pretty much like uh, all the bad ideas are Vince's and I run NXT. Yeah, the gist of that podcast interview. Because everything was like wrong. He is not wrong. He he played off the 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 actual WWE fan kind of. He tried Mm -hmm. to play play off on that and say, hey, everything's not my fault. It's all Vince. You see what (laughs) NXT is doing? You think it's me? So I'm saying it's me. Mm-hmm. But everything else is Vince. So fuck him. Fuck him. Make me your wow. ruler wow. and live. Take that, stockholders. How about you, Matt Carlins? I uh, I learned that uh, if you make your living in the uh, 
the pornography industry, your chances <laughs> of reaching the WWE Hall of Fame are slim. Oof. Oof. What about you, LB? Sorry, Val Venus. Uh, well, Matt, Car- <laughs> Matt Carlin's kind of took mine. No. Uh, can, you, can you come back to me, please? I win! Damn no. Scotland! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I realize that Cena is is not relevant at all for WrestleMania. Like, <laughs> No concept of what Cena's going to be doing at WrestleMania right now. Nobody's even interested. They don't care. It's like, he's already going to face Rusev, but it's not going to be at Mania. It's going to be <laughs> some made-up pay-per-view that nobody gives a crap about either. So, yeah, Cena is now on the way out. <laughs> nobody gives a crap about him. and Even the WWE are, are just not doing anything about it. This is a sorry time. I'm a Cena fan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. We have two um, scenes. You know yeah, what? we do. Fucking yes, we do. Do you have something to about? This is this is the first time I met another Cena fan. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't ten, and it's you're fair. a world away from him. Uh, <laughs> sort of broke my little heart. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, what you got? Uh, we're still producing a better podcast than um, Steve Austin. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! Take that. Fact. Shots fired. And Amen. we get better guests. There you go. There you go. And ours real. Our guests are <laughs> honest. Yeah, that's true. Our guests too. are Scottish. And we got a live yes. response from Zach Gowan on the, on the Twitter. So. What's that? No, I, I was saying I'm English, not Scottish. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry. What? I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> what are, what are I could have like sworn we did the same exact thing. Last time you were on, that, too. That's true, but I also proposed to him last time we were that's on. That's true, too. That's true, too. Um, I'm saving that until we get off how, the air. How do we screw this up when we watch as much British television as we do over here? Sork, we don't watch British television at all. No, 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 I do. Do you know how much British stuff I have on Hulu Plus? Misfits is Sork, amazing. Sork, I Anyways, have my Sonic screwdriver out. Right there is that, too. Uh, <laughs> hey, while you got that out, uh, where are you at? Where are you at? You're... Hold I'm on. right here. Wait, no, no, your video. Oh, there you are. There you are. Me. That's there. It is. there I was looking is. for your video. Um, so, what'd you learn this week, uh, Doctor Mad Mike? Uh, well, before I say what I learned, Bobby in the chat room learned well, that we you. lost a great director this week. Rest in peace, K. Fabe. Oh. oh. Rest in peace. Um, but I learned that. Oh, I, I had. I learned that Dean Ambrose. Um, just wants to be on the wall. He just wants to be on the wall. That's it. Like, granted, you'd be on the wall if you were the WWE champion. But he's like, no, I want that second spot. I, are you he talking can't even about name Matt this one. Yeah, are you talking about Matt Carlin's wall? This wall? No, I'm talking about. I want to be all right, on Matt I'm talking wall. about. <laughs> The wall in WWE headquarters that has WCW the picture of, wall? No, Ooh. the wall in WWE headquarters in Stanford that has all of the current champions on it. Because when Dean Ambrose walked to Hart, walked from Hartford to Stanford last week, and we didn't see where he went, he was just walking down that hallway like, you know what? I'd really like to be the second picture on this wall next to Brock Lesnar. That's what he. That's what I learned, and that's what he learned. I, I like Riz's better, where he just wants to fuck the wall. <laughs> Amen. On top of that big skyscraper. Amen. What'd you learn? <laughs> Amen. Oh, the cares on me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I learned from. I can't ever show it to LB. He just wants to fuck the wall. <laughs> There's plenty of reasons. Because the F word. I know. Uh, I learned. And the wall. I learned from wrestling this week that the thing that makes a good wrestler a great wrestler is the, abil- the ability to improv. Uh, mm-hmm. And that is why Rusev and Lana are my favorite people uh, in the last few years because they get it. They absolutely get it. L- Lana can get it, though. They, Lana can get it, and she does get it. And so does Rusev. <laughs> no. I thought you were going to throw out a girlfriend at that one. Girl. That was- Weird. Um, I learned this week that um, um, Triple H is a is a production buff like I am. So there it means in the future I'll be COO of the WWE <laughs> by that logic. 
So, but no, it was actually really cool to to kind of hear that that kind of side of things and how he was interested in that stuff. Uh, so, uh, did I get everybody? I think that's about it, right? Right, right, right. right. And, and Wheels learned that he can he designed a great looking hat. It, it is a pretty good looking hat. <laughs> I okay. <laughs> I, I don't know what this hat is. I don't know. I, he I don't designed know, a like, picture. I just well, like it's on Facebook, and I just glanced at it. It's a pretty good. It's a pretty cool looking hat. Okay. So it's just like it has nothing other else to say. I, uh, um, guys, <laughs> it's uh, the been the wrestling man show. Thank you, Dan Hinkles from Scotland, joining us. Woo. Check it out, uh, serious hyphen parody dot com at Dan Han- Han- God, I'm sorry, <laughs> at Dan Hinkles on on the twitters. Um, also, uh, and, and follow everybody else, mainstream Matt on the twitters. At Mad Mike four eight eight three at uh, Amen two please at DJ Lunchbox at the E Riz at Bobby F J Town at Hot Wheels R W A even though he wasn't on the show and I think I got everybody there I'm at Sawyer Join join us at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com for all the shows and please subscribe in all the fashions you want to check out the Mayhem Minute uh, all this week we'll see what I do with that show we're still figuring that out um, and of course join us here live live at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com at nine p.m. Eastern time and big thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for helping us with notes and tweets all night long. Join on my us. shirt. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Bye. 412-206-WMS0. Oh. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you had a good time. Mayhem out. Just wait. 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 This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.